Now, I'd like to welcome on stage um, Dave Nicholson, who's the business architect of Zopa.com, um, a UK-based uh, social lending service, um, who have been working with us on the API and uh, integrating it into their uh, user experience. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Good morning. Zopa is the world's first person-to-person -person lending and borrowing exchange. Um, what that means quite simply is that we put people who want to lend money in contact with creditworthy people who want to borrow that money. And because there's no bank in the middle, actually both sides get a great deal. Um, we launched in the UK just over two years ago. We've got almost 150,000 members in the UK, and we're looking to launch in the US and one other country later this year, so things are going well. Uh, in fact, just about a few hours ago, we got uh, awarded our first Webby. So we won the Webby for the banking and bill paying category. There's something a little ironic about someone who's not a bank winning the banking category, but never mind. Um, why do people use Zopa very quickly? For lenders, people who are lending the money through the site, um, first and foremost, they get a great return, so they can get a better rate than they can sort of money into a bank account. Um, they find it's very human, so people like lending money through Zopa rather than just giving their money to a bank and earning interest from a bank. They prefer to actually know that their money is going to someone else who's using it to buy a car or save for a holiday or something. Uh, it's safe, so since we launched, uh, we've had default rates of about 0.05%, so all of our fraud controls and our credit controls are working incredibly well. And you're in control as a lender, so you choose who you lend to and uh, at what rate you lend uh, at. Now, borrowers, again, borrowers get a great rate, so they can borrow more cheaply from Zopa than they can borrowing from a bank. They're very flexible loans. They can repay when they want with no charge. Again, there's no bank, so they know they're paying their interest back to another person just like them rather than to a bank shareholders. And it's very fair, so we try to um, you know, take into account additional things in uh, a borrower's profile when we're credit assessing them that a bank wouldn't. Now, what we think we've done with Zopa is create a new category called social lending. Um, and what social lending does is it gives people two forms of reward. They get a financial reward, either a better return as a lender or a cheaper rate of borrowing as a borrower. But they also get a social reward. There's, they get that, that reward from knowing they're interacting with people rather than a bank. Now that feeds into the Zopa community. So that 150 odd thousand people in the UK is a community of people, a very active community. Um, and I think what we've achieved is quite unique in that we've actually created an online community in financial services that's very trusted. So because of those low default rates, because of all the safe and secure things we put in place, there's a trust there that means people are happy to transact over the web in a very unusual space. So, you know, most people would say, you want me to lend money to someone I'm never going to see over the internet, you've got to be, you've got to be kidding me. Actually, we've put in place enough controls to make that work. So, when we were talking to Microsoft around the, the Windows Live services, we wanted to find something we could do with Microsoft that sort of built on that community. Now, there are a few other things we had to put in place as well. It had to be low cost and it had to be easy to implement. So, we were a little startup. We don't have a huge development resource. Um, so we had to know that it wasn't going to cost us a fortune or take a long time to implement. Both of those things, I'm happy to say, worked excellently. So the, the, the cost of the service is very reasonable indeed. And um, our developers you know, spent about five man days from start to finish, um, which obviously included getting up to speed on all the APIs and that learning curve. So it was a very simple thing to implement. Beyond that, we had to know that it was going to be valuable to users. So we could have put together something that we put up on screen here today in Vegas, and it looks fantastic. But actually, we wanted to create something that was really going to be used going forward in our website. And we wanted something that built the community. So we wanted something that you know, either grew the community or strengthened the links within that. And of all the things we talked to Microsoft about, the one we settled on was the Windows Live context piece. Now, what we want to do with that context piece is to use that to improve our member get member scheme. So a little like Paul was talking about earlier with the music retail site, we wanted to use the service to, to grow the number of people using our member get member scheme. Word of mouth is quite an important advertising channel, acquisition channel for Zopa. Um, and our, our member get member scheme we've had in place for a while, but we wanted to really use this to power it up. And now I'm going to walk you through a quick demo to show how we've done that. Yeah, just need to sign out of uh, Messenger here or else. I'm going to get Paul's contact up. Close that down. Actually, I'm going to need to close down a few other things. <laughs> I'm a Mac man, I'm not used to these funny things. <laughs> That's because we're running on a beta site, so you can safely ignore that. So what we're going to see here is um, really our Zopa website. So this is what a user would see once they've signed into the Zopa website, and they'd come to the page that wanted to introduce them to the member get member scheme and tell a friend. 
And what we can see here is we've got various different ways of using the member get member scheme. And we've got the Windows Live contacts at number one, obviously. Um, so if I click load, that takes us to a quick screen that just repeats the information around what's actually going to happen here. So sign into Windows Live. We're going to retrieve your contact details through the API. And then you can choose who to send emails to to tell about Zopa. We go through these same screens that Paul showed earlier. We can sign in. And then we get the error message that's not really an error message. And we give access. And again, we had the privacy policy link there. So yeah, privacy is something that Zopa takes quite seriously. So it's a financial services website. Clearly, we have to be aware of security and privacy issues. And when you sign up into Zopa, you go through the you know, terms and conditions that include a lot of information on what we will do with your data. And we repeat that on that link. Now, what happens there? We've gone through the API. We pull back the user's contact list. Um, and you can see that we've been able to present that in a way that's completely compatible with the um, Zopa look and feel of the website. So we've got that information, as Paul was showing, and we've formatted that and put that into our own website information, our own website look and feel, sorry. And obviously, I can choose who I want to send the emails to here, and I can soon send them out. But let's say I want to send an, uh, there's a contact that um, I want to add that's not on here. Very easy, I can do that simply here. And I'm sure I saw this guy wandering around outside. So let's just add him. There we go. There he is. So we put that back through the API now. There's Elvis. We can tweak the, tweak the contents of the email below and send an email out. And that's that. It's very simple. Now let's just show you what we've done with that contact to prove that this is actually writing live to the API again. So if I go to the Windows Live mail service, so we've seen, we've seen it live working on Messenger. Here's the mail service. And there's the man, Elvis Presley. So that's just been added through the API from the Zopa website now available on the Windows Live site. Now, of course, Elvis is dead, <coughs> alas. So we have to delete him. Bye-bye, Elvis. Now, if we go back to the Zopa website, because of that token that ta Paul talked about earlier, if I come back here the next time and I want to go through the same process, I don't have to go through that same author authorization authentication again. I can just click Load, and up it'll come. Elvis has left the building. He's not on the contact list. So they said what we have there is a sort of a live two-way updating between the Zopa website and the Windows Live Contact address book. Completely seamless, completely real time. Now, what we want to do going forward is move beyond that. So we think that's a fantastic, that's a fantastic tool. We think that's really going to drive usage of our member get member scheme because it means that instead of having to sit there and type out 50 email addresses, you can just put in your Windows Live ID, get the 50 email contacts, and just send who, you, just choose who to send the emails out to. Um, moving beyond that, we're quite excited by a lot of the other things that are coming down, down the line. So we see potentials for using APIs like the Photos API, the Profile API, to bring back rich information from the Windows Live service to enrich member services on the Zopa website. There's one particular thing I want to talk about quickly, that's not the demo, which is friend of a friend. Now, this is something that's coming on a little later, and I promise Paul I wouldn't commit him to any dates. Um, but through that, we can, we'll be able to get a user's contacts and then also his contacts' contacts. And what we want to do with that on the Zopa website is to create trusted groups of people that can transact with each other. So today on the Zopa website, when you choose to lend to someone or borrow from someone, it's quite anonymous. You don't see much information around them. You don't get to choose explicitly who you're transacting with. In the future, we can see a model where actually you want to create a group of people who you know who are trusted to you and transact with them. So this is the model we're thinking of. So in the center of the concentric rings, you see the Windows Live user, his contacts around him, and then contacts of the contacts, the friends of a friend around them. And that creates a group of people that you can trust and you want to transact with. Now, how might that look on the Zopa website? So here's a quick mock-up. So you can see creating a group of trusted people. And in the middle there, under your friends, those are the people that you pulled down from your contact list. So Arthur, Richard, and Arthur's twin, I guess, him again. Um, and you can see in there that you, know, they, you can see the number of people they have in their contact list. So you know, Arthur number one has three people, Richard has six. And what we've chosen to do here is to trust Richard. So we're saying, Richard's a friend of mine. I trust him. I'll transact with him. I'll lend him money. So we've ticked him. And then we see, we, we traverse through his contact list, and we see his contacts. And we can see he has six contacts, and we've chosen to trust three of those. And we can see additional information, so we can see you know, who, how many other people have, trust, have chosen to trust Richard's friends. So what we're doing here is you know, potentially creating a very rich environment where people can transact in a trust-based way rather than relying purely on credit information. Uh, so that's in the future, but what we have right now and going live very shortly is that demo that I showed you, the member get member scheme, which we're really excited about. Um, and we're very excited about the future as well. So yeah, thank you, Paul, for all your effort that you've put, helped us getting this live. And thank you. Thank you.
So now I'd like to welcome Keiji Kanazawa, uh, a co-worker of mine who's working on uh, improving even more the Windows Live Contact service by adding messenger functionality. Yes. Thanks, Paul. Good morning, everybody. I uh, hope you're having a great time in Vegas and at Mix. So now you've learned through Paul 